Hello, hello, Kim Coco here. Today's vinyasa flow sequence is going to be about building happy hips in this fresh new year. I highly suggest you grab two blocks and then anything else you need to make your practice more comfortable. And then we're gonna go ahead and take child's pose to begin, placing the blocks underneath the elbows if that feels okay for you, just to add a little bit more of a heart opener as you get situated on your mat. I recommend the middle level to start with. You can take a nice wide leg position and then slowly start to walk your hands out and make sure your elbows are supported by the blocks. And then let your hips set back and slowly start to let your heart and your head melt toward the mat and slowly come all the way down as far as you can comfortably, taking a few rounds of breath as you come into your practice today. Feel the shoulder blades start to melt down the back. Feel some spaciousness around the neck and the jaw, the heaviness on the forehead as it reaches toward the ground. And then a sense of heaviness as the hips melt down toward your feet. And send the breath out to the sides of the body, to the sides of the ribs as you breathe deeply in and out through the nose. Before we bring any movement to the body, just begin to deepen the breath and allow the breath to activate every cell. Start to feel your body coming alive with your breath. And then use that breath to fuel your body as we begin to move here in a few moments time. If you have an intention you'd like to set for your time here on your mat today, do so now. An intention being just how you'd like your life to be different in the future. The desire you have, a vision or an idea. You might even ask yourself, what would it be like if I had more strength on my mat, more flexibility in my hips, more evenness in the mind? And how might those attributes affect your practice as they infuse it? On your next inhale, slowly start to make your way to tabletop position. We're going to come into puppy pose next. So stack the hips over the knees and you can either walk your hands out and melt your heart and head back down to the ground. Arms extended being option number one. Option number two is to utilize your blocks. We'll keep them both about shoulders distance apart. And you can bring your elbows to the blocks and bend the elbows to get into the lats a little bit more. But wherever you are, keep the shoulder blades drawing down the back, hugging the shoulder heads into the sockets as you Engage, slightly pressing down into the floor or the blocks. And feel the belly button drawing toward the spine so you're not sagging in the low back. And stay for about three more cycles of breath here. And 
And then on your next inhale, slowly setting the blocks to the front of your mat. We're not going to need them quite yet, but we will in a minute. And then take a few rounds of cat-cow or some organic movements in circles from tabletop position. Still lightly pressing the floor away. Spreading the fingers wide. And maybe find a combination of movements that helps you feel comfortable and grounded here right now. Maybe even start to take the hips back, making some circles like a figure eight or an infinity. Or just front to back. Whatever's going to feel good to you, just to move and check in with what you're working with today. And then when you come back to stillness, start to tuck the toes under, draw the shoulder blades down the back, press the floor away as you lightly bend the elbows and lift the hips up and back. And then maybe you slowly start to walk the feet out. We're gonna take about a minute here in down dog to start to awaken the body, build some heat. Maybe draw the chest slightly forward so the upper arm bones plug into the shoulder sockets on the head, heavy ears in line with the biceps. Feeling the hips lift up and back, even if the knees bend slightly before you start to straighten the legs. And then noticing the inner and outer edges of the feet and which one is slowly pulling toward the ground more. And then see if you can even it out so that you're even on the hamstrings as they start to lengthen. Taking a few more cycles of breath here. And then on your next inhale, slowly start to ripple your spine forward to plank. We're gonna hold here for a moment. Actually a minute. <laughs> so see if you can still feel shoulder blades drawing down, down the back, pressing the floor away. Imagine the hands hugging toward one another without moving your mat and then broaden the collarbones. Draw the belly button toward the spine. Fill the hips in line with the shoulders all the way down to the heels. So you have a nice long straight line of energy. Chin lightly tucked so all four sides of the neck are long and then keep the jaw soft, the head soft, the face relaxed eyes relaxed, but keep reaching through the back of the heels and breathe. Tap into your inner strength as you start to build some heat in the legs, in the hips, in the core, in the shoulders, all of which we'll use to help fuel our movement in just a few moments. Take two more full cycles of breath. You've got this. And on your next exhale, lift the hips up and back to down dog. And then slowly start to walk your feet forward to Uttanasana. Nice fold of the front of your mat. You can take a rag doll here. You can sway a little side to side if that feels good. Let the head and neck drop. And maybe bend the knees generously to feel space created in the back side of the body. And then slowly start to feel your feet press into the floor and roll up one vertebrae at a time, coming all the way up to stand, making your way to Tadasana, reaching your arms up when you get there, exhaling hands to the heart. Pause for a moment, checking in. After just a little bit of movement, notice what sensations arise in the feet and the strong legs as you press the floor away. 
up through the tall spine, shoulders broad, and crown of the head reaching up. And then we'll start with some traditional movements here just to get the body ready. So we're gonna start with a couple rounds of uh, a half sun salute. Again, familiar before unfamiliar. So as you inhale, reach the arms up. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward. Take your inhale to lengthen the spine, Ardha Uttanasana. You have your blocks here if you so want them right off the bat. And then you exhale, fold. Inhale, strong legs, flat back, reaching up. Exhale, hands to the heart. So we'll just do two more rounds just like that, inhaling, reaching. Exhale to fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine, feel the heart move away from the belly button. Exhale, fold again. As you inhale, strong core, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Last time, inhaling. Exhale to fold. Ardha Uttanasana, flat back lengthen, shoulder blades down the back as you extend the crown forward. And then as you exhale, bow into yourself again. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. So again, moving on to something a little more familiar as well, Surya Namaskara C. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step your right foot back, drop the knee down. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, release the hands to the floor, move your blocks aside if you used them just a moment ago. Drop the knees, chest, and chin to the ground, eight points touching. Inhale, coming through to cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in here. As you exhale, step your right foot forward, drop the left knee down. Inhale, arms reach up, Anjanayasana. Exhale, step forward and fold. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, reach up and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step the left foot back. Drop the left knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Back toes can stay tucked or untucked, your choice. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back to plank. Drop the knees, chest and chin. Elbows in right by the side of the body. Inhale, cobra pose. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. Maybe even lift the hands. Exhale, down dog. Take a nice full breath in here. Exhale, left foot steps forward, drop the right knee, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands frame your front foot, step forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen the spine, belly button toward the back as you're strong. Lay lift up and exhale to fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands down the heart to the midline. One more time each side, reaching up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, step right foot back, right knee down, reach the arms up. Keep the belly drawing in. As you exhale, take your hands back to your mat, step back to plank. Exhale, drop knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra pose. Tops of the feet press down, even the pinky toe. Exhale, down dog. Take a nice deep breath in here. And as you exhale, step the right foot forward. Drop the left knee down. Inhale, low lunge. Keep drawing the right heel back, stabilizing the hips. Exhale, step forward, fold. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, press your way all the way to stand. Reach up tall. Hands to the heart. Last time, second side, reaching up first. Exhale, fold. Inhale to lengthen, shoulder blades down the back, stepping the left foot back, left knee down, reaching the arms up. 
Soften the shoulders, space around the ears. Exhale, hands to the heart. Come to plank, knees, chest, chin. Again, elbows in right by the side of the body. Controlled movement as you come through to your belly and cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a nice deep inhale here. And then on your exhale, step the left foot forward. Drop the right knee, inhale, low lunge, second side. Left heel draws back as the right knee moves forward. Exhale, step forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reaching all the way up. And exhale, hands to the heart center. Pause for a moment, check in. Notice what you're working with and how it's changing, how the hips are opening with some gentle movement. Nice fluid movement, opening up the prana as it moves through the nadis in the body. Noticing where you already feel different after a few rounds of Surya Namaskara C. And then we're going to add on. So as you're ready, inhale, reach the arms up. We'll start the same with Surya Namaskara C for the first half here. Inhaling to lengthen front and back side of the body. Step the right foot back, drop the right knee down. Inhale, low lunge. As you exhale, hands come to the floor. And then we're gonna go knees, chest, chin one more time. Inhale through to Cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Here's where we're going to mix it up. So as you inhale, come forward to plank pose. Pause. We're gonna start with the right foot first. So find your nice long line of energy. Lift the right foot up off of the floor. Turn the right toes out and take your knee to your right elbow. Into the center and back. Out, center, and back. One more time. And then we're gonna switch it up. Knee to chest, out to the side, back. Knee to the chest, out to the side, back. Make sure you internally rotate as you get back there. Center, out to the side, back. And then take your right knee towards your right wrist for pigeon pose. So this time we're gonna prop yourself up, use your blocks. The floor feels really far away. Again, right heel towards the left front hip bone. And then see if you can start to press the floor away with the right shin bone, outer right thigh, to lift the heart up. And then we're gonna move. So we're gonna inhale with a cactus arms, and then exhale, hinge halfway forward. You're still pressing down actively into the floor. Inhale, reaching up, open the heart. As you exhale, hinge halfway forward and press down with the right leg. Inhale, open. Exhale, bow and pause for a moment here. Feel your spine long, anchor down through the left foot, the right hip as you press the floor away. Breathing here, broaden across the collarbone still. Draw the belly button toward the spine so you're engaged and strong through the core. And then from here, hands to the mat, tuck the back toes under, three-legged down dog. Maybe take a moment, open up the hip. Shake up the head if you notice any tension accumulating. And then open up, square off the right hip one more time. Look between your hands and step that right foot forward and through. Grab your blocks. We're gonna come to pyramid pose. So, spin the outer edge of the left foot down. Make sure your feet are about hip distance apart. And then find a nice long line of energy. You might even take your right hand to the back of the pelvis to make sure you're level. And then pause here, micro bend the front thigh, or the right, micro bend the right knee so that the, there's space in the hamstrings. And you can stay up tall. Or you can start to fold in if that feels good, but just stay where you can breathe. We've got a few rounds of breath here. Focusing more on drawing the rib cage away from the pelvis, getting longer, as opposed to getting closer to your front thigh. Watch the breath slow down after some movement. Building some length in the back side of the front leg. Anchoring down through the back outer edge of the left foot and the left heel to make this bow possible.
And then on your next inhale, slowly start to make your way back up. Prop yourself up as much as you need to and then come onto the front heel and then press the floor away or your blocks away and imagine you're gonna lift your right foot off the floor. So you're gonna kung fu, lift, 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 engage the legs, lift, 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 and then slowly set it down, release, step forward and fold and notice the difference right to left. Pause here for a moment. And then roll up one vertebrae at a time or come up with a flat back as you reach the arms up. Hands to the heart center. Again, noticing the difference right to left already. Second side, inhale, reaching the arms up. We'll start the same way, getting through Surya Namaskara. C, slowly fold, set your blocks out of your way. Inhale to lengthen. And then we're gonna exhale, step the left foot back. Drop the left knee, inhale, low lunge. Reach the arms up. As you exhale, hands frame your front foot. Step back to plank, drop knees, chest, chin. Come through to cobra pose. Maybe even lift the heels of the hands off the floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. On your inhale, come forward to plank pose. Find your nice long line of energy. Press the floor away, hug the hands in, broaden across the collarbones. Lift the left knee, left foot off the floor. We're gonna go out and in first. So knee to chest, or knee to left elbow, chest and back. Two out to the side, center and back. Toes out, knee to elbow, to center and back. And then we're gonna switch, knee to chest. Out to the side, back, internally rotate the leg, chest, out to the side, back internally rotate here we go last time back and then draw the left knee forward coming to pigeon pose again but not resting this time so pause find your breath notice that you can press the floor away with the outer left leg left shin broaden across the collarbones you can prop yourself up on a blanket if you need to but we're really just using the strength of these muscles to build some heat there Stay if you'd like, or inhale. Take cactus arms and open the heart even more. As you exhale, hinge and fold halfway forward. Two more just like that. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Maybe lift your gaze. As you exhale, hinge forward and pause. Keep pressing the floor away with the left shin, left knee, feel your hips squaring and your spine long, your core strong, shoulder blades down the back, heart open. Take another round of breath here. And then as you're ready, plant your hands. Three-legged down dog with the left leg up, maybe bend the knee, maybe open up the hip. And then as you're ready, square off the leg, extend the leg, step forward, pyramid pose. So walk that back foot in slightly. Make sure the feet are about hip distance apart. Find a position that's gonna feel good to you. And again, maybe check in. Notice how the pelvis feels. We want it square. And be less concerned about folding forward and more concerned about the length you're creating all the way up the spine to the crown of the head and in the back side of the front leg. And then allow this length to grow even if it's just in your mind's eye by anchoring down to the outer edge of the back foot, lifting the inner arch of the right foot. Stay up high or fold. Wherever you are, keep an openness around the heart. I know we hold a lot of tension in the hips physiologically, but the heart takes a toll when we do so as well. So can you keep an open-minded approach to how we create space in the body here. Approaching this change without judgment or force or an expectation of how that change will take place. As you inhale, lengthen your spine. Here we go once again. So find your position on your blocks as you need to. So you can press the blocks away, floor away, lengthen the spine, 
flex the left foot here, draw the belly button in so your whole body's engaged, anchor down through the back foot, and then slowly start to lift the front heel and hold. Breathe, breathe here. Strengthen the hip flexor on this left leg and slowly release, step forward. Uttanasana, one more time, set your blocks aside. We'll need them in a minute. But pause here and notice the difference now. You're a little more symmetrical. And then as you're ready, inhale, come all the way back up to stand. Exhale, hands to the heart. Pause. As we approach this next section, if you're teaching more of a Hatha-based class, you can step back into your crescent lunge. Since this is a more flow-based approach, we're gonna come through the same start to Surya Namaskara C, and then finish out the sequence. But you can always make it more stationary and slow-paced, depending on the students you're working with. So this will give you a start, an idea of how to utilize these postures here. So we'll start the same way we did with Surya Namaskara C just to get us into it. It's nice, long, heat-building flow. When you're ready, inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward. You know where we're going. Inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, step the right foot back, drop the right knee. Inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, hands frame your front foot. Step back to plank, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, come through to Cobra. As you exhale, downward facing dog. So again, same starting point we did before. So you're gonna inhale forward to plank. Pause, find your nice long line of energy. Lift your right foot. Three circles of the knee in each direction. At your own pace, move with your breath. So you wanna go out to in three times, in to out three times, creating a little bit of mobility, fluid in the hips. And this time, step your right foot forward. We're just gonna take a twisted crescent lunge here. Use your block if you need to on the inside of that right foot. You might even feel the back of the pelvis still level here as you stack your right knee over your right ankle. And then hug the right heel back in space. And then maybe reach the right arm up. So pause here. Take another round of breath. And then slowly, slowly place your left hand on the floor. Walk your right foot over to the right side of your mat. And then we're gonna come onto the knife edge of the back foot and slowly start to drop the right hip down, reaching the left hip down, right arm back. So if this is too much, just stay higher or place a block underneath your left hand. And then just feel the length created along the whole left side of the body. Keep the left shoulder dropping away from the ear. So you're pressing the floor away with that left hand to stabilize the shoulder. And then from here, press into the floor, lift the hips up, engage, coming into a side Vashistasana for a moment feeling the length and strength in the whole body here. And then we're slowly gonna take your hands to the mat, walk the right foot in, and reach that left leg up for standing splits. Again, your blocks are close by, so grab them if you need them. Maybe grab them if you don't need them. Maybe bend the right knee a little bit to help leverage the left leg up, and keep rotating the inner edge of the left thigh toward the ceiling. Feel the whole spine long, maybe let the head and neck drop. And then from here, lengthen your spine. Look back at your left leg. We wanna come parallel to the floor, coming into warrior three with the legs here. So you can keep the front knee bent if you need to. Check your pelvis if you need to. Feeling that right hip draw back and away from the right side ribs. And then reach out through the spine. So a nice supported version of Virabhadrasana three to really accentuate the length on the backside of the legs. 
focus on the core strength needed for this pose. Maybe even come onto fingertips if you so need to or so desire. Or maybe you try to hover the hands if that feels good. Wherever you're at today, stay for two more cycles of breath. Actively strengthening these hip stabilizers. And then as you exhale, step your left foot behind your right, bending the knees if needed and fold forward. So really just enjoying a stretch here in the side of the legs, outer hips, rocking a little more weight to the ball mount of the feet without scrunching up the toes. As you inhale, lengthen the spine, look halfway up, uncross the feet so you're back in regular Uttanasana, then slowly bend the left knee, right hand can stay on the block, underneath the chest, and reach the right arm up. So really getting into the outer left hip again here, and feeling the pelvis level, weight evenly distributed on the feet. Taking your time here to breathe, Enjoy being with <laughs> stable and balanced with both feet on the ground. And then carefully, slowly bring the right hand down, bend both knees, Utkatasana, and come up to chair pose. From here, sweep your right arm back. We're staying in this open twist and make sure the knees are level, right? So they're even in space, hips are dropping down, heart is open, chest is lifting. Maybe turn your gaze back. Find the heat in the hip stabilizers again, working the legs. As you inhale, press to stand, take the right knee into the chest, and we're gonna take a twist. If you feel so inclined to grab your right foot and stretch forward with an extended right leg, do so as well. But wherever you are with this right leg, press the left foot into the ground, hug the left hip in toward the midline, find something to gaze at so you have a nice point of balance. Take a couple cycles of breath here. Enjoy being alive on your mat. Happier hips, happier life, happier face. Take that happiness into every aspect of your life. And then slowly unwinding, we're gonna take this right foot back and come right into horse stance. So now facing the long edge of your mat here, maybe take the hands to the hips and externally rotate the thighs. You're moving the musculature toward the back of your mat. Make sure the knees are pointing out at the same angle as the feet. And then you might take your hands and slowly twist side to side. Doing a little bit of spinal rotation here as we keep opening up the hips. And then pause in the center and hold. Keep moving the inner thigh bones back behind you. So the knees, inner thighs are opening. Lift the arches of the feet. Even take the hands parallel to the floor, out to the side. Hands to the mat, straighten the legs, slowly turn back to the front of your mat. And now, left leg forward, right foot back. We're gonna take a crescent twist in the opposite direction. Breathe here. Again, hug the left heel back. Feel the throat open. Left shoulder blade moving closer to the spine as you press the floor away with the right hand. Again, blocks are right here if you need them. So stretch up. And then as you exhale, we'll take a break from the feet. Set your blocks aside. Come all the way down to the floor. Pausing here, inhale, take your hands wide on your mat or even wider than your mat onto the fingertips. Press the tops of the feet down into the ground, press the front of the pelvis down, draw the belly button in as you start to lift the heart into a nice wide cobra. Maybe take a couple shoulder circles here.
breathing comfortably. As you exhale, release, turn your head to one side and breathe. Notice the heart beating in your chest. Notice the rhythm of breath. And then we're going to come either repeat the first back bend in a cobra or interlace your hands behind your back for a shalambhasana. Extend the legs out from back behind you. Press the tops of the feet into the floor first as you reach the arms back. Press the knuckles back toward the tailbone between your legs as if you're going to reach for your feet. Keep broadening the collarbone, but slightly tuck the chin so the neck stays long. And then maybe lift the feet. Extend through the legs, engaging the whole back line of the body with strength. But also growing longer from head to toe instead of just higher away from the ground. Take another round of breath. And then slowly release, turn your head to the other side. From here, come up to Sphinx Pose. So you might check to make sure your elbows are shoulder distance apart, if you can reach the opposite elbows. Elbows underneath the shoulders, broad across the collarbones. You can take Cobra Pose. If this feels too intense, you can stay here, or you can slowly start to bend the knees, broadening the heart, lengthening the whole front line of the body. If it's accessible to you, you can even start to straighten the arms and reach up and back with the head and neck toward the tops of the feet, as though the tops of the feet, the toes, would touch the crown of the head. Take another round of breath. Slowly release when you're done. You have an option to press back through tabletop to get to plank or slowly engage the quads, tuck the toes under, bring the elbows in by the side of the body, activate everything in the body before you press up to plank and then hold here. Pause for a moment. Again, you can drop the knees if that feels better to you, but we're creating a neutral spine here after the back bend before we move into any kind of forward bend. So really important to create space in the spine. And then as you exhale, press back to down dog. Reach the right leg up and back. And then slowly bring the right knee forward for pigeon. So again, not a folding pigeon, an active engaged version of pigeon. So broaden the heart, open the collarbones, stay here, hands on blocks or the floor. And then slowly start to hinge halfway forward. And again, we're gonna hold and breathe, activating the leg, press your mat away. Outer edge of the right foot, outer edge of the shin, outer edge of the right quadricep. As you hug the right hip back to square the hips and lengthen the spine. You have just another couple rounds of breath, shoulder blades down the back, broaden the collarbones. And then from here, hands to the floor, tuck the back toes under. We're coming to down dog with a figure four leg. So cross the right ankle above the left kneecap. Staying here for a moment to get into the outer hips once again. Another cycle of breath here. Keep pressing the floor away, keeping space between the shoulders and the ears as the left hip drops toward the mat. And then start to look between your hands. Step that right foot forward one more time. Inhale to lengthen, low lunge. Exhale, fold. And pause for a moment here. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Look halfway up. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, reach all the way up to stand. And pause. Hand at the heart or by your side. <sighs> there should be a significant difference in the right and left side of the body. So just check in with that. See how you feel. Enjoy that whole process of opening, creating space, creating happy hips. And in this spaciousness, being aware of what's going to fill the void. Maybe it's that intention you set at the beginning of your practice. Maybe it's just a curiosity of the good that's coming to you. And you're just indicating you're open and ready to receive it. All right, when you're ready, second side. So as you're ready, blink your eyes open, reach the arms up and inhale. As you exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, step the left foot back, drop the left knee down, Anjaneyasana, reach the arms up. So same Surya Namaskar, C entry, hands to the floor, knees, chest, chin. Inhale to Cobra Pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Here's where our flow begins. Inhale, back to plank. We've got our three circles, so lift the left leg. You can go out, knee to chest, back, out, knee to chest, and back, out, knee to chest, and back, and then we're switching sides or directions. Inhale, center, out to the side, back, internally rotate. Knee to chest, out to the side, extending back, toes point down. The last time, this time step the left foot forward, coming to a crescent lunge twist here. So feel left knee stack over left ankle. Use your blocks as you need to, and then slowly start to twist over to the left. So you get the pelvis as level as possible as you do this here. Reaching the arm up. Enjoy your feet on the ground here because now you know what's coming. And without getting attached to it, see if you can keep this nice open-minded approach as you start to press your left hand, or your right hand down on the floor, walk your left foot out to the left side of your mat, come onto the outer right edge of the foot and slowly drop the right hip down, stretch your left arm back. And perhaps gaze back over the back edge of your mat. Lengthening the whole right side of the body, outer right hip. Breathing here. And then slowly start to press the outer edge of your right foot into the ground. Press into your left foot to lift the hips and come into a supported Vashistasana. So that the sides of the hips face, or the hips face the side of your mat. We're pressing down through the right hand, draw the right shoulder blade down the back. From here, start to turn your torso back toward the ground. Come onto the left foot for standing splits. And again, grab your blocks if you need them. Doesn't have to be your deepest standing splits ever. We're just working on balance, building strength in the hip stabilizer so the left knee can bend a little or a lot as long as the right leg internally rotates and reaches up toward the ceiling. And then with that intention, that firm grounding, feel the spine growing long, even if your head and neck are relaxed. And breathe deeply. Slowly start to lower your right leg parallel to the ground. Reach your torso forward or coming to Virabhadrasana 3 with support here. So you might take your left thumb, your left hip crease and move the flesh away from the left side ribs here. Keep reaching back through the right heel, belly button toward the spine, collarbones broad. So you can feel length all the way from the inner right heel all the way out through the crown of the head. And you can micro bend the left knee if you need to for support or just to take any undue pressure off the left leg. 
and breathe. Find a nice rhythm of breath that can support you in these poses. Maybe even come on to fingertips. Maybe take your hands to your heart. You want the added challenge, but find a place you can stay comfortably. And then hands down, cross your right ankle behind your left and fold. Again, bending the knees as generously as you need to to stay and ease in here so that your weight can move slightly forward and the head and neck can go soft. Maybe even shake your head yes and shake your head no to make sure that happens. Taking the shoulder blades in the opposite direction of gravity so they move away from the head and down the back, which is now toward the ceiling, away from your ears. On your inhale, lengthen the spine, look halfway up, uncross your feet. Come back to Ardha Uttanasana, and this time we're gonna bend the left knee, sorry, bend the right knee and stretch up to the left. Second side here. So notice that the pelvis stays level. You're rotating, not in the low back, but in the thoracic spine. Breathing here. As you exhale, lower the left hand down, bend both knees, Utkatasana. Pause. As you exhale, sweep the left hand back and the right arm forward. And again, keep the knees alongside one of another, one, one another. Shoulder blades down the back, maybe gaze over the left fingertips. As the hips sink down, low back lengthens, building some heat in the legs. And then inhale, press to stand, hug the left knee in, right arm back, twist over to the left again. Same options apply. You can reach for the left foot and hold there. If you want more of a hamstring stretch or just stay in your balancing twist, dropping the left hip down so it's even in space with the right. When you're ready, we're gonna to come to horse stance. Now you're gonna face the left side of your mat, sink the hips down. And you might move a little side to side to create some space. And then from here, we're gonna take the hands behind the head and slowly lean a little side to side instead of twisting right to left. Maybe elbows start to come closer to the thighs, but make sure the knees are still pointing out the same direction as the toes. And then pause, maybe reach the arms up. Two more rounds of breath here. Slowly release, turn to face the front of your mat again. Now we're back in our twist, this time the right foot's forward, right arm reaches up. Pausing here. And then exhale, release the hand back to your mat. Slowly come down to your belly. Cobra pose, this time inhale, hands by the side, ribs. Broaden across the collarbones, maybe hover the hands. Press the tops of the feet into the floor, activate the front of the quads. Lengthen through the crown of the head. As you exhale, release. Turn your head to one side. In these poses, let go of the need to control your breathing. Just let the body breathe itself. Notice the work you're doing, shaking up everything in the system. And then again, same options apply. You can do Cobra again. You press the tops of the feet into the floor. Take the opposite thumb on top for Shalambhasana and start to reach the hands back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Draw the shoulder blades down away from the ears. 
lengthening down through the feet, pelvis, reaching out through the crown of the head and then maybe lifting the legs, inner spiraling the thighs, keeping space in the low back, tucking the chin slightly and breathing deeply here. Take another full cycle of breath, enjoying your strength and then slowly release, head to the other side. As you're ready, repeat Cobra, Shalambasana, or come to Sphinx and allow the elbows to rest underneath the shoulders, broaden the collarbones, even actually let your torso droop so you can feel the opposite as you press the forearms into the floor. Imagine as you externally rotate the arms, they're not gonna go anywhere, but you're gonna feel like they are, and then stay or slowly start to bend the knees. Maybe opening up the throat. Pressing the front arm straight if that feels good to you. But stay at a place you can breathe comfortably here. And slowly come back down again. Same options apply to get to plank. You can come through tabletop. You press up to plank, however you're gonna get there. You can even stay in tabletop or knees bent plank. Pausing for a moment here to engage the core once again before you press back to down dog. Pausing again here, reaching the left leg up and back when you're ready and coming forward to pigeon. Our happy hips pigeon that's active. So pressing the floor away with the left shin Stay here with the fingertips on the floor or the blocks. Hands to the heart if you're following me and hinge halfway forward. So engaging the strength of the hips to lengthen them. Pausing here, anchoring down through the right foot and the right leg. Drawing the left hip back so your hips still stay square to the front edge of your mat. And pausing to breathe deeply. One more round of breath. Open the heart. Exhale, down dog with figure four on the left side. So feel the left inner thigh moving away from the torso. Feel that left foot flex to protect the knee. Their hands pressing actively into the floor to lengthen the entire spine. As you inhale, step left foot forward, pause to breathe in a runner's lunge. Exhale to step forward and fold. Inhale to lengthen, look halfway up. Exhale to fold again. As you inhale, make your way all the way up to stand, and this time pause again. Notice there should be a little more evenness in the body this time around. I'm gonna turn to face you, but you can stay facing the front of your mat if you'd like. Take the feet wide, drop the hips down for Malasana. Again, you have a block, so you can sit on your block if that's gonna be more comfortable for you. And the good news is if you're teaching a long class, you can go through that whole sequence twice or you can break it down into two smaller sequences or you can add things in between if that feels good. But for now, we'll just do the standing sequence once. I highly recommend if you're going to do it twice, have some fun with it and do one movement per breath. It'll definitely keep your class moving, challenge the balance, and make sure that they're not attached to the outcome of the pose or how it looks because with that much movement, you can't really get into your deepest, fullest expression of the pose. And that's okay. But since we are going to keep this class shorter for now, 
We'll stay in Malasana for another couple rounds of breath. Maybe taking that triceps down the legs a little bit more as you open the heart up. Lift the inner arches of the feet. You can always roll a blanket and place it under the heels if the heels have a hard time staying down. Otherwise, from here, you're gonna come back to a seat. We're gonna take Upavishta Konasana. So you can grab your blocks if you need them. Stretch the legs wide to a nice V. Again, blocks are great underneath the pelvis if you need them. Otherwise, sit tall. Make sure you can release the hands and still sit upright. So we're engaging through the feet here. And you could just stay upright if that feels good. Or you can slowly start to hinge forward. If you have tighter hips and hamstrings, you might just stay up a little bit higher and pause. We're gonna be here for a minute or two. So focus more on the length of the spine as it comes out of the pelvis in your fold and focus less on rounding of the upper spine. But make sure the head can be relaxed and supported wherever you are. And that might even mean just keeping your hands on the floor and letting your head and neck drop. Choice is up to you. Find a place where you can go from the movement to the stillness with more ease. See if you can slow the breath down. Notice the sounds in the room around you or even outside of the room. Notice how powerful your sense of awareness is to take in not just that information outside of you, but everything that's going on in the body right now. And celebrate that you can use your mind to calibrate your focus back to your breath, back to that nice, even sense, that equanimity within you as you've dusted off some layers that might have been stored in the hips of chaos or stress or tension. And then breathe into any spaciousness you feel here in the body as those sensations arrive in your mind's eye. As you inhale next, sit up tall. Take your right hand in front of you, left hand behind you, and start to rotate your spine over the left leg. And then we're slowly going to fold as comfortably as you can over the left leg, supporting yourself as needed so that you can be comfortable here, grounding down through the right hip as you start to fold. <coughs> Excuse me. As you inhale next, slowly come back to center, face the center of your mat. Take your right hand behind you, your left hand in front of you. Reach up through the crown of the head as your spine starts to rotate over your right leg. Keep that length as you start to fold to the right, turning your heart toward your extended leg a little or a lot, depending on how this side relates 
to the body. It might be different and likely will be different than the other side. Noticing limitations that might be in the hips or the spine, the side body. And be okay with whatever you're dealing with today, thanking your body for being strong and alive and capable. Thanking your mind for staying focused, and being here right now without distractions. See if you can slow down the rhythm of breath so that as you breathe in, the length of the breath out can also match it using your pranayama to create and increase the equanimity in your mind. Take about two more full cycles of breath here. As you inhale, come back up to center. Help your knees back in. Maybe windshield wiper the knees. Before you come on to your back, we're going to take two rounds of bridge pose. If you have more time, by all means, take more. But slowly come on to your back, feet hip distance apart. As you're ready, start to press the floor away, lift the hips up. Maybe walk the shoulders closer to one another, maybe interlace the hands. And then feel the heels draw back, knees move forward. Not necessarily movement involved, but just the energetic actions. Feel the heart start to lift toward the chin and the chin lift away from the heart so the neck is open and long on all four sides. Take your inhale here. And then exhale, come back down one vertebra at a time. Take a full cycle of breath here. And then of course you have the option for wheel if that's part of your practice. Otherwise we'll come right back up for the second set of back bends. Maybe take the opposite interlacing of your hands if you're reaching behind you, keeping the heart open. But see if you can soften around the hips here. We've done a lot of work with them. So instead of gripping the glutes or the hamstrings, see if you can just feel them engaged to hold you up, but don't clench. And then use the depth of your breath to send oxygen and energy all the way down to even the toes, every cell of the body, and wherever you feel sensation at this time. Take your inhale to unwind the shoulders and your exhale to come all the way back down, pausing here for a moment. Take one spinal twist to kind of clear everything out so you can keep your knees side by side or cross the right ankle over the left as you start to move over to the left side with the legs opening up into cactus arms if that feels good, or you can keep your arms out at a regular T position, depending on how much space you have for your practice. See so if you can give up any need to try or force or go deeper, and just let yourself be in this space you've created. Come back to the center, second side, crossing right knee over left, or just keeping your heat knees side by side. Maybe shift the hips a little bit to the right. I'm sorry, to the left before you drop your knees to the right. 
enjoying a second side of your spinal twist here. See if you can feel both shoulder blades dropping toward the mat. Back of the shoulder is heavy. But again, no need to make yourself go deeper. Just enjoy the depth of the pose you're in and allow your breath to take you deeper. Allow the release of any tension to shift the tissue in your body. Another cycle of breath here. Do inhale, come back to center. And we're gonna take Supta Baddha Konasana. So we have these two blocks handy right here. Take the soles of the feet together. Use the blocks to prop up your thighs or knees where needed. And then pause, fully supported in the legs, back of the body, supported by the ground beneath you. Take a nice and deep breath in through the nose, filling up as deeply as you possibly can. Fill up. Hold at the top, but notice the body softening. And then exhale through the nose or the mouth. So two more, just like that, filling up deeply. Holding at the top. Softening the jaw, face, space between the eyes. Exhale it out. Last time, fill up. Your deepest breath of the practice, maybe in sipping a little more air when you get to the top. Let it go. And then let the body just breathe itself here. No need to adjust the rhythm or the cadence of the breath. No more effort is required. And in the space you've created with the happy hips, notice what you're open to receive right now. Whether it's ideas, sensations in the body, change in emotional spectrum. Anything that comes to mind, what are you going to receive? How are you going to fill this space you've created? And don't force that invitation, just allow. And you're welcome to stay here with the knees bent, soles of the feet together in Supta Baddha Konasana. Or you can extend the legs long for Shavasana, yogi's choice. But take rest. See if you can move as little as possible. Observe as much as possible. Alert and aware of the heightened sensations in the body, openness in the body, spaciousness in the heart and the mind.
Stay longer if you have the time. Or slowly without moving the body, just deepen the breath. And then send the breath down a gentle movement of your fingers and your toes. Maybe take a nice long stretch of the entire body once again. And then take your knees into your chest and slowly start to roll over to one side. And then make your way back up to seated. Taking a moment to bow your head with your hands at your heart center. Really thanking yourself for this time you've carved out on your mat today. Aware of how you're different now than when you showed up. Because you are not the same person you were when you started this class. Allow a smile to curl to your lips, thanking yourself for this practice. I thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.